All right, this is the extra examples from the sections 4.1 through 4.3. Uh, we're looking at problem number nine. It says you want to invest $5,000 in a certificate of deposit or a CD for 12 months. You're given the options below, which one would you choose? So we're just going to work through the three options using the correct formulas and see which one gives us the better return on our investment. So if you look at the first option, it is 5.25% quarterly compounding. So we need to make sure we're using the correct formula. And remember these were in your notes, what the formulas were. So we need to write them both down first. Remember we had A equals P parentheses one plus R over N to the NT. And we had A equals P E to the RT. Remember this one part was only used for continuous compounding, so that'll be for part C. So if we do part A, we would have that our future value is our investment, which is 5,000 times one plus 0 0.0525. You have to make sure you turn that into a decimal. Quarterly compounding is a four. And then we raise it to the four and 12 months. A lot of people would want to put 12 in for this, but remember this is measuring in years. So this is actually just one year. Now I worked this out on my calculator and I got that this came out to $5,267.71. For part B, it's compounding monthly. So again, we're using this formula. We did get a lower interest rate though, which would be good if we were borrowing money, but it's not great if you are investing money. Um, but what we want to know is, is this enough to mess up our plan? And you know, even though we got a lower interest rate, we're compounding more. Um, but when you work this one out, you get about 5,255.81. So notice even though we're compounding more, that quarter difference in, quarter of a percent difference in interest did affect us. And then the last one is we're losing another quarter of a percent, but we're compounding continuously. So the gist of this is that we want you to see that the rate you get is actually really important. Seven, five times one for the year. And this comes out to 5,243.23. So the best option is A, that gives us the best return on our investment. Okay, we had one more that we skipped over in section 4.3. It was number five, the very last page of 4.3. Um, it's a multi-part problem, so we're gonna work through it. It says the demand function for a product is modeled by P equals 50 times E to the negative 0.0000125X, where P is the price per unit in dollars and X is the number of units. What production level will yield a maximum revenue? So we have to have our revenue equation and we're gonna be taking a derivative to maximize it. And then we're looking for the production level, which has to do with, remember, the um, amount of things that we're making and selling. So we've got the little P. So if we wanna make it a big R, you times it by X. Now this is a little different than our polynomials because you can't distribute that X to the E part. That is its own unique piece. It's a, uh, essentially a, um, an exponential function. We need four zeros, yes. One, two, five, X. So the only thing we can do is tack on an X times our 50. Um, and then we would take the derivative of this, which is going to be a product rule now that we have this 50X times the E part. So 50X is my first function, so 50 is its derivative. E to the negative 0.0000125X is my second function, and its derivative would be itself times the derivative of the uh, exponent. So we're gonna get a coefficient out front of our zeros and the one, two, five, Okay, so that's our, for our product rule. So we get that it is 50 times e to the negative 0.0000125x plus, uh, we would want to go ahead and work this out, 50 times that negative um, is going to be, I guess I did not have that worked out before, so let me do it real quick. Um, actually, no, I'm going to leave it as it is. So let's leave this as it is. So this was a 50x times this because we can factor something out. And I think it'll be easier to do it that way. E to the negative 0.0000125x. 
Okay, so this is just multiplying that diagonal together without actually doing anything. Because I see that we have an e to that power and a 50 in both of these, so we can pull those two things out. So 50 e to the negative 0 0.0000125x, and then this leaves me with a 1 here. And then this one, I will have pulled out the 50, but not the x. I'll still have this coefficient up front, but I'll have pulled out the e part. So it's going to be a negative 0.0000125x. So that's just factoring out a GCF, and that makes this easier to solve. Now, this guy right here is never 0. So you can't really get any um, possible critical values from that. Because anytime you have, remember, an exponential raised to a negative power, um, that is not going to make the overall number negative. It just makes it closer and closer to 0. But it never actually equals 0. Remember, that's that horizontal asymptote. So this part's the only part we can solve. And I, when I solve this, I get 80,000 units. Now, I'm pretty sure since that's the only answer that that's my maximum, uh, that's going to yield my maximum revenue if I produce that many units, but we can always double check, remember, by putting 80,000 in the middle, picking something smaller and something larger, and when I do my sign chart, I end up with a positive on this side and a negative on this side by doing my derivative and plugging this in using my calculator, um, so this is definitely a max. Okay, so that is our number of units. The price at the production level has to do with the P formula, the little p that they gave us at the very beginning. So we need to plug in 80,000 units for that. So little p equals 50 times e to the negative 0 0.0000125 times 80,000. And when I work this all the way out, I get that this comes out to a price of, and I just used my calculator, $18.39 per unit. So there's my price per unit. And then the last question is what is the maximum revenue? Now that's asking you for if you have 80,000 units being used and you plug it into your revenue equation, what would that max revenue be? So my revenue equation remember, was 50x times e to the negative 0.0000125x. If we plug in 80,000 for both x's, which is a lot to write, then what I came up with was that my revenue was equal to 1,471,517.76 if I round. So that's the max revenue that can be expected. Okay, that is it, I believe, for the ones that we skipped over in class. So that is the end of this video.